My name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercises for Chapter 2. For the first item, you're asked to change the style applied to one or more parcels to display them as open space rather than single family. So to accomplish this, you can open the Properties window. There's actually several ways to do this. Properties window is one way. And then I'm going to zoom in and click on a parcel. And the way I select a parcel is to click on the, the area label for that parcel. And now it's just a matter of going into the style and changing that from single family to open space. And there's a slight change in the appearance. The outline is now green instead of blue or black. So if I wanted to do another parcel, it would be the same procedure. With the properties window open, I would select it and choose open space as the style. Now I want to point out that I could also have done that using the parcel properties command up here on the ribbon. And on the information tab of the parcel properties dialog, I can also change the style there. All right, so either one of those will work for changing the style of the parcel. For item two, you are asked to change the style assigned to one or more parcel area labels to display more than just the parcel number. And as you can see when I zoom into these different parcels, the only thing I'm seeing in the middle of the parcel is the parcel number. So to change that, I need to change the style of the parcel area label. Again, an easy way to do that is through the properties window, which I already have open. And let me make this a little bigger so you can see the names of the choices. There's parcel area label style, and instead of parcel number, I can choose something else, like maybe name, square foot, and acres. And there you can see the difference in the label. I can also accomplish this using the parcel properties command. So I'll click the label, go to parcel properties, and on the composition tab, I can change the area selection label style as well. So there's two different places that I can make that change. For the third item, we are asked to use grip editing to change the geometry of the road center line and observe what happens to the geometry of the parcels. And while we're doing that, we want to think about the relationships that, that make this behavior possible. So first, let's see what happens when we change the center line geometry of the road. I'm going to change the radius of this curve here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it all happen. And you can see what happens to the parcel geometry. It changes as well. As I change the center line of the road, the right of way also changes. And since the parcels are linked to that right of way, they change too. Let me change it a little bit more. And you can see everything updating. So if we think about the first two examples we looked at, they were the relationship of style to object or style to label, which a label is also a kind of an object. So we were able to change the appearance of a parcel by changing the parcel style. We were also able to change the appearance of the label by assigning a different label style. Now we're looking at a different kind of relationship, a geometric relationship between alignments. This, uh, this center line happens to be an alignment. This right of way happens to be an alignment as well. And these are geometrically tied to the parcel lines. And it creates a system where everything's tied together and things update the way they're supposed to update. So those are the kinds of relationships that are in play with this demonstration right here. Next, we are asked to use grip editing to move several parcel lines that are perpendicular to the road. And again, we want to observe what happens when we make these adjustments and think about the relationships that are in play to make this possible. So here's a good example of the kind of parcel line we're talking about, one that's perpendicular to the road. Now watch what happens when I click the diamond-shaped grip and slide it around. The first thing you'll notice is that it stays perpendicular to the road frontage. You'll also notice when I click a new location for it, 
the label on the line moves with it. The, the label uh, at the center of the parcel recenters itself and we may also have changes to the labels um, referencing the geometry itself. So this length label got longer and the radius that wouldn't have changed but the delta would have changed. Let's see it again here. Notice how this parcel line when I slide it along it's going to tie it not from this line but eventually to this curve back here. So you can see how it changes the back line that it ties to. So there must be some relationships going on there between these lines and the lines around them and that's exactly what's happening. Again these, this is an alignment right here and these are parcel segments and they know that, they, that the parcel segment is supposed to stay perpendicular to the alignment. Um, because when the parcels were laid out this was called out as the frontage of the parcel and you'll learn about that later on in an upcoming chapter about parcels. At the back of the line it recognizes these other parcel segments and says I always want to tie to the closest parcel segment. And then the labels are also tied back to these parcels as well. Remember, uh, or actually you will learn uh, later in the book that when you take parcel segments and form a closed shape out of them it creates a parcel and these labels refer to that parcel. In fact one thing I can show you is if I change this area label style to one that shows the acreage I can see that number update as well. Watch the 0 0.38 acres become 0 0.49 acres 0 0.33 acres so that label is updating as well. So here we see a great example of the dynamic relationships built into Civil 3D because all of those uh, text changes that I would normally have to make manually are all happening automatically and that saves me a lot of time and quite frankly it saves me from having to do a lot of work that's not real fun to do. Who wants to go around the drawing editing all the acreage from 0.49 to 0.33 or whatever the change happens to be. For the final relationship we're going to take a look at the link between objects in different drawings. In our example here we've got an alignment and we want to show a profile along that alignment and we need a surface to do that. The problem is that surface is in a different drawing but luckily we have published a data shortcut here of that existing ground surface that we can make reference to. So I'm going to right click and create a reference to that existing ground surface. I'm going to use a style that uses one foot contours and there you can see the surface in my drawing. Now I can, I've got the alignment in this drawing, I've got the surface that I just referenced in so I've got enough information to create a surface profile. So I'll add that here, draw in profile view, I'm not going to worry about any of the settings and just go ahead and create that profile right in the drawing. So just like you did earlier in the chapter, you can do the same thing here. You can use this data shortcut that was published to Prospector to make a reference to that surface, pull it in from a different drawing, and then do other things with it like cut a profile or do a volume calculation or do lots of other different design activities with that referenced information. So that concludes the additional exercise for chapter two.